um, ususurutsa Afrika yefo murakaza neza pasiteri wanje imana ikoroshe zayani muri iki zumweru mukihe ituke cheche ho inkurinzisa in english we say a warm welcome a warm south african welcome my pastor may god use you mightily this week as you are going to share the good news with his children and also please allow me to welcome all new members that have joined the prayer room today you are where home is today's theme is the war room it depends how one understands the war room for me a war room is a place that you sit and you wrestle with god in your sanctuary a place that is holy and sanctified but i leave that to pastor and therefore please may i ask uh, sister pumlangamlane if she's already joined to please open with the prayer of adoration and lift our pastor unto the throne of grace and mercy this morning. Sister Pumla, are you here? Good morning. Yes, I'm here, my sister. Yes. Thank you so much, my sister. Can you please lift us this morning? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Good morning um, to you and to God. Good morning to everyone. May we pray, please. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for your wonderful mercies. Nothing good we've done in front of your eyes, but because you are a good, a caring, and a loving God, you have given us this opportunity and a privilege, dear Lord, to be counted amongst the world of living this morning. We do not take that for granted, dear Lord. We say, great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every day. Dear Jesus, we come to your throne of mercy with nothing mm. but bringing our hearts to you, dear, dear, Lord, dear Lord. We ask for the um, cleansing of our sins. We ask you, Lord, that you imbue us with your Holy Spirit. Cover us, dear Lord, from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. In a special way, dear Jesus, I present to you, Sister Tulip, who will be steering this ship for the next seven days, dear Jesus. I ask for health. I ask for wisdom, dear Lord. I ask that you give her courage, dear Lord, and that nothing will disturb her peace during this week. That she is able, dear Lord, to carry us all because she is the face, dear Lord, this week. And everything else, dear Lord, will be solely dependent on how she manages it, dear Lord. But we know that it's not all by her might, but it is through you, dear Jesus. Dear Lord, we ask for the team that is working behind the scenes to make sure that these news are carried all over the world, dear Lord. Ask you, Lord, that you continue to provide them with all the, uh, um, the resources that they need, dear Lord, and give them good health as well. In a special way, dear Lord, I want to present to you our dear pastor, dear Lord, Pastor Jeffrey, the one who have appointed this week, dear Jesus. We might never understand why you chose him for this week, but you know it better, dear Lord. Mm. We present your child to you, dear Jesus. He might have preached your word over the past years, dear Lord, and, and, and has made wonders, dear Lord, because you have used him in a special way. But this week, we ask for the special anointing. Mm. As we is talking under the subject of war room, dear Lord, as your sister have said, that this week, we will be wrestling with you, Lord. So as you imbue him with your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, also do not forget us. Not only us who will be here um, online, but we've got the online viewers as well. That we ask you, Lord, that you reach them as well. Prepare our hearts that they are ready to receive your word. And not only to receive it, but it can also change us to be better Christians, dear Jesus. During this week, dear Lord, we ask you that you give us the peace that suppresses all understanding. As we'll be wrestling with you, dear Lord, in this war room, let us experience you in a manner that we have never experienced you. 
Manage everything, dear Lord, with your hand. Starting from all the technologies, we always battle, dear Lord, with the load shed sheddings and everything else. Dear Lord, we present each and everything that no child of you who need to receive the uh, your word this week might um, might end up missing this because of the few technicalities that we'll be experiencing. Yes, your child, dear Lord, I bring him to you that you cover him with your precious blood. Give him good health. Give him wisdom, dear Lord. Let him, uh, allow him to choose the words that will uh, come and talk to us in a special way, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Cover each and every one, even those who will still um, be coming to join us. Cover them. This is my humble prayer. And with Jesus, um, I pray. And with thanksgiving in my heart, amen. 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 Thank you so much, my sister. May God bless you. Therefore, blessed is a man who realizes that his own utter helplessness and who has put his whole trust in God, which is one of our weapon, as well as hope being another weapon in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. My pastor, may you please unmute your mic and take us to the throne and share with us what the Lord has given unto you this morning. Over to you, Pastor. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. I believe you're doing well. Want to thank God so much for the privilege that has been accorded to me to share uh, the word of God for all the days of this week. I want to thank the coordinators for wrestling with me. And I want to thank the two ladies who have uh, preceded me. Thank you so much for the introduction. And I don't know where you picked the Kenya Rwanda words. That was, that was really warm. And thanks for the prayers. May the Lord answer these prayers. Uh, without taking much time, I want to get us started. Uh, before we do so, I ask that we pray. Eternal Father and God in heaven, we thank you so much this morning. And we ask, Lord, that you may speak to us in the coolness and the stillness of this moment. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good. So fine, fine, fine. It's glad to meet most of you, I think, for the first time. Uh, it's really exciting that I will be interacting with you as I present the word of God every morning, 5 a.m. So welcome as we will be taking a journey together. Maybe by the end of this, this week, then my theme, the war room, you know, shall be very clear. This is uh, just an introduction, you know, taking us uh, into it. I, I have purpose to entitle this morning's devotion, Don't Waste Your Punches. Don't Waste Your Punches. So the war room, but the first presentation is Don't Waste Your Punches. On October 30th, 1974, there was a historic heavyweight boxing match in Kinshasa, Sair, we now, we now call it DRC, that is, that is Congo. It was a match that was you know, pitting you know, together against each other, uh, two great boxers of the time, that, that is George Foreman, who was 25 years old then, and Muhammad Ali, you know, who had been a, a heavyweight champion. Uh, previously, he was he was 32 by then. So George Foreman, who was 25, and Muhammad Ali, who was 32. Ali was good; he was a good boxer, but Foreman was you no know, better. He was the best, and he was highly favored to to win, and it was likely that he was going to crush uh, Ali. This big fight, this big, big, big fight. The iconic fight, which was highly and much publicized, was referred to as Rumble in the Jungle. So two guys, two great boxers were meeting and the match was dubbed Rumble in the Jungle. And as the match starts, it, it was clear who was going to win because George Foreman started to punch away Ali, who for most of the time, for most of the time, he was shielding himself from the hot punches from Foreman. 
seven rounds, you know, uh, boxing goes in rounds, round one, and it was clear, it was evident, it was becoming very clear, crystal clear, that four man was, 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 was doing good. Round two, the same thing, round three, uh, the same thing, round four, the same thing, you know, and, and George Foreman was beating Muhammad Ali. No, it was, it was Foreman doing the punching most of the time. And it was Ali who was shielding himself. And, and occasionally he would you know, throw in a punch or two. And uh, this later was discovered to have been Muhammad Ali's strategy, that he was trying to wear down his opponent. Okay, follow, follow me closely. So, so Muhammad Ali is playing a strategy. He is allowing himself to be beaten up by his opponent, George, George Foreman, because it was a strategy. He would go to the ropes and protect, you know, shield himself. And this strategy would later be, he, he called it rope adopt strategy. By the start of the eighth round, Foreman is... Apparently, you know, he seems to be fatigued and, and he's worn out because he had wasted his punches for the, for the seven rounds, throwing his punches, but, but not really availing much. And that is when Ali did his thing of stinging like a bee. And, and so with, with, with quick successions, he started to throw his punches very quickly. And he brought down the man who was favored to be no, the favorite for, 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 the, for the match. And Ali was declared the winner. And he regained, you know, his heavyweight uh, title. But, but look at me, look, look, look at this, look at this, everyone. Everyone following me, look at this. It was, it was, it was Foreman who wearied himself. It was Foreman who was beating himself. Think about that, think about that. He was doing this by wasting his punches. For the, eight, for the seven rounds, he was busy throwing his punches. Eventually, you know, ultimately, he got worn out. He got tired. And, and all Ali had to do was just come out and, you know, throw his punches very quickly. And this man was knocked out. L let me bring this quickly because I know my time will be running out. I want you to open with me the book of First Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Open with me the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24, do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives a prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. I want to jump to 26. Therefore I run verse not with uncertainty thus I fight not as one who beats the air. Now listen to that. Paul is saying, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. That's what uh, one of the versions says. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. He says, mm -mm, I, I don't want to beat the air. Listen to what another version uh, says about, uh, from, from verse number 26. The Bible says, that is why I run straight for the, for the finish line. I run straight for the finish line, that is why I am like a boxer who does not waste his punches. And, that, and that, that really that really touched me. Paul is saying, okay, I, I, I have enlisted myself as a fighter. Okay, I, I find myself in a great controversy between good and evil, between God and the devil. And he says, I do not want to fight in this battle like a boxer who is wasting his punches. He says, no, no, not me, not me. And that's why I thought this morning, I thought this morning and I said, maybe I, I would remind myself and you, but please don't waste your punches. Don't waste your punches. Paul says, I, I know my goals. He, he says, I have identified my goals. I know my objectives. I know why I am following Jesus Christ. I do not want to waste my punches. And so as believers, we have no time for shadow boxing. No, shadow boxing is when you throw your punches at no opponent, no one. You're just like beating the air. Shadow boxing is, is, is merely the act of 
throwing punches at no one in particular. You, you have no opponent that you are fighting against, but you are busy throwing punches. Or, no, 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 you, you, your punches are of no value. You, you, your, 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 your punches, are, you're just beating up the air. And so this is, this is, uh, this is boxing language. In boxing, it is going through motions of a boxing match that is shadow boxing before the actual match takes place. And, and in short, it's the idea of fighting an imaginary opponent. So no, 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 no one in particular that you are fighting, it is just some imaginary opponent that you are busy throwing the punches. And Paul is saying, mm -mm, not me, I am in this thing because I'm serious. But Paul is saying, I am not shadow boxing. Paul is saying, I am not throwing and wasting my punches. He's saying, I'm not just through the motions. Now listen to that. He says, I am not just going through the motions. I am not fighting some imaginary opponent. This is a real fight. So we, we are in a war, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if that is good news or bad news, but we are in a war. This is a real fight and, and we are in and I'm actively fighting the adversary. And the adversary, uh, as mentioned by Peter, I think First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, is, is roaring like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Many Christians are just shadow boxing. They are going through the motions of a half-hearted Christianity. Not, not, not really having a deep and a serious connection with Jesus. Maybe they are submitted to Christ through the waters of baptism, but that did not actually change much at all. Baptized, yes, but not, not really serious, uh, effectual change. Going to church, you know, deciding to listen to that sermon, and they like the good preaching on, on, on Saturday, they like the good preaching on Sunday, but, but it really does nothing in their lives because they do not actually apply it to their lives. And so they are busy doing the motions that is wasting the punches, busy doing A, B, C, D, doing, busy doing one, two, three, but it doesn't avail much. And Paul is saying, mm -mm, that is not me. In fact, as you read down, that should be in, in, in verse 27, Paul says, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. He says, why? Lest when I have preached to others, I myself, should be disqualified. That, that, is, that is a sad thing, that, that after doing all these things, after waking up every morning, after doing stuff, then you are told, mm -mm, red card, you're disqualified. You, you didn't do as it was expected. Wasting punches. I, I do not want to waste punches. I, I, I tell Jesus Christ as I preach and I, as, I, as, I, as I do stuff in your name, please help me that I may be sincere, that I may be genuine in my faith and be faithful until the end. I, I do not want to waste punches. And I know you are here this morning and you don't decide to waste your punches. Wasting punches or shadow boxing is going through the motions of prayer, going through the motions of meditation, going through the motions of scripture reading with no effectual power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That means I am busy, busy doing this but there's no power in me. And, and so we live, as I would say, defeated spiritual lives. Wasting punches is settling in a comfortable spiritual routine than really getting out to deal with the enemy and to wage a real and a serious war on sin. Wasting punches is, is like spending a lot of time and a lot of energy beating the air. Paul says, mm -mm, I am not beating the air. He says, mm -mm, I'm not wasting my punches. He says, no, 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 no. I do not want to feel good that I am in this thing, yet I'm not really in it. Mm -mm, I do not want to look like I am in it, to look like I am a follower of Jesus Christ, to have all the motions of a Christian, but really there is no connection. He says, I do not want to be disqualified when all is said and done. The shadow books, according to Paul, has, has, has the appearance of godliness. But he says, there is no power. There is no power. So that I may look like a Christian, but there is no power. 
there's no power of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling power that comes from God. Let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, that the only way we will win this fight is if we stop shadow boxing, if we stop pretending, if we stop playing the role of hypocrites and we start doing a real fight. And the key to this successful fight is, is by doing what Paul says he did. He says in verse 27, I discipline my body. If there's something that I have to deal with, I've got to deal with it. If there's some hidden things in my life, in my closet, in, in, in everything that I do, he says, I want to deal with those things because I do not want to be disqualified. I do not want to waste my branches. I do not want, so what do I do? He says, I discipline my body and make it my slave. Because I want, when all is said and done, the master will say, welcome, well done, good and faithful servant. You've, you, you've done it. So Paul is telling us this morning, we must take control of our bodies, take control of our minds and bring them to subjection, bring them in tune with God's will. Get into our prayer room, the war room, and ask God to give us the power that only comes from above so that we can overcome sin and apathy and laziness and idleness that sometimes creeps into our lives. It's my desire, ladies and gentlemen, that we will rise up to the occasion and fight. We want to finally say with Paul, I'm not just saying, but saying with confidence, with Paul. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I like that. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. And henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. I, I want when all is said and done, I was not busy wasting my branches. I was not busy waking up in the morning, yet there is no connection, real connection, vibrant connection, a robust connection between me and Jesus Christ. Because let me, let me say this as I get closer to the finish line. We are engaged in a great controversy in this jungle, you know, rumble in the jungle. And the, you know, the devil himself is rumbling. And this is a fatal battle that we've, we, we do not want to waste our punches. And, and when all is said and done, I get a knockout from the devil himself. I, I want to have a close connection and a communion with Jesus Christ. Wasting punches means that you are just going through the motions and doing a lot for God. I could be doing a lot for God. The brethren will say, mm, that's good. You're doing a lot for God. Yet, deep down my heart, I know there's no connection between me and Jesus Christ. That, that's, that, that is like wasting your punches. Because when he returns, he will say, mm -mm, mm -mm, I never knew you. That's so sad. When Christ says, depart from me, I never knew you. But Christ, I used to wake up very early in the morning. Sorry, I never knew you. Christ, I preached. I, cast, uh, I, I, I exercised demons. Mm -mm. I did miracles. Mm -mm. I, I did this. Mm -mm. He says, I never knew. It's my prayer, ladies and gentlemen, listening to me this morning. But when Christ shall come again, he says, good and faithful son, come, 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 come. It's my prayer that we don't waste our punches. It's, it's our prayer that we get back to our, to our lives again. And we do an inventory of our spiritual lives to really ascertain, do we have a strong communion, a strong connection with Jesus Christ. That, that's a challenge I'm throwing to you this morning. I'm, I'm throwing this challenge to you. Get back and do a spiritual inventory. Sit down, assess your assets, assess, assess, assess your liabilities. What is it in my life that I've got to deal with? What is it that I engage, I, I involve myself that is not adding value to my spiritual life? What is, what is that good thing that I, that, that I, that I engage in? The nice things that I get involved in, yet they are busy puncturing me and deflating me. And, and I'm just busy, but not really moving. In motion, but, but, but not really covering any distance. It's my prayer that God will speak to us through this message this morning. I want to pray as I bring this to closure. Let's pray, dear loving Father, we thank you so much this morning for the opportunity to listen to your word. God, thank you for these 20 minutes that you've spoken to us. 
especially to me and to these listeners and those who will be following online. And I pray, Lord, that your will may be done in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you may help us to know how to live this Christian life. And like Paul says, that we may walk circumspectively, knowing that we are living in the last and loose ages. And the devil will want to make us busy, but not going anywhere. The devil will want to make us engaged, even in your service, but, but there's no connection between us and you. Jesus, we pray this morning that we who are gathered here in, in tens and hundreds may establish a strong and robust connection with you. That when you come again, Lord, you can recognize us. You can say, I knew you come. I knew you. Help us, Lord. Give us victory over the things that we deal with each day. That we may be victorious, Lord. And as we gain victory, we may also be agents of strengthening others. Even after we've been sifted and, and we come out clean, God, we may be agents to draw others to you. Bless us, Lord, today and bless us this week, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.